Today we are creating this pixel logo scan animation using Apple Motion. Now this tutorial is massively inspired by Smirtima Graphics amazing tutorial in After Effects. Also if you're a patron I have a download for you so you can apply this directly in Final Cut Pro. Opening up Apple Motion you should get the project browser. If you don't you can push command option and N. Today we will be selecting the motion project. You can leave your preset here at whatever you like as well as your frame rate and I recommend setting the duration to something like five seconds. After that, we're gonna push open. The first thing we'll wanna do in motion is import our logo. So go ahead and push command I to import it and locate the logo that you wanna bring in. If your logo is too big, go ahead and jump on over into your inspector under your properties and scale it down to the correct size. After doing that, I'm gonna rename this group to just be the logo group. Then going over to the left side, we'll find our library and locate our generators. In here, we're gonna look up the color solid. Click and drag that up above the logo group so it's in its own group. We're just gonna call this the revealer group. After that, go back down to your generators and locate your clouds. Click and drag those directly into the revealer group so that now your clouds and your color solid are in the same group. From there, we can select our color solid, go to the inspector and change the color from blue over to white. After we've done that, we can actually disable the clouds group, then selecting our revealer group, we can go over into our properties and find the position parameter. Let's move forward about two seconds or so, click to add a keyframe, then move back to the beginning of our timeline. Then finding the X parameter, go ahead and set that to negative 3840, or if you're in a 1080 project, set that to negative 1920. Now that we have this basically animated in, let's go ahead and select the color solid go on up to our filters, find distortion, and select bump map. Now clicking and dragging the clouds generator, we can place that inside the bump map well. You should see that there's some distortion coming up here off the top edge. Let's go ahead and change that direction over to 90 degrees so that it's coming off this right side. Now that we've done that, we can actually drag up the amount quite a bit so we can get a good idea of what the effect is doing. Now you'll notice that it's not really animating, it's just kind of sliding in really slowly. So let's go ahead and adjust that. Selecting our clouds generator, let's go to the generator panel and locate the offset parameter. Click on this down arrow so that we have the X and Y values. You'll notice that as I animate the X value, all of our clouds are sliding. Let's go ahead and click on this down arrow next to the X value add a parameter behavior and select rate. The rate parameter allows us to continually add a given value onto any parameter we want in motion. So this will allow us to continually animate those clouds throughout the duration of our project. Under our rate settings, we can set this to whatever we like. I'm just gonna set it to 0.5 for now and see how that looks. So now we should have this really cool looking clouds animation over our graphic. But the problem is we don't wanna see this giant white blob covering up our logo. So with our logo group selected, go ahead and right click and select add image mask. Now we can go ahead and collapse this revealer group and drag that directly into the mask source. So now if we push play, you'll see how our logo is slowly being revealed. So that in and of itself is really cool, but there's so much more we can do to really enhance this effect. With our logo group selected and the revealer group selected, go ahead and right click and select group. And we can just call this the logo reveal group. Now that we've done that, we can select that group and push K. That is going to create a clone layer. Now the clone layer is going to receive any attributes we apply to the original layer. So if we add any new and unique effects, those clone layers will receive them. But we can apply separate effects directly onto the clone layer without affecting the original layer. So these can be exceptionally powerful when applying effects. I'm gonna rename clone layer one to be scan one. Once we've created scan one, go on up to your filters, find your color options and select colorize. With that applied, go ahead and change both of these colors over to white so that you have a completely white version of our effect. Now that we've added that colorize effect, selecting the scan one layer, go ahead and push command D and that is going to duplicate it. Now I'm just gonna rename this so I can clearly see what it is. I'll call that scan two. Right clicking on scan one, go down and select add image mask. Then from there, we can click and drag scan two into this well. So now scan two is going to be affecting the mask of scan one. After that, we need to come down and select invert mask. Everything is going to be completely clear. What I'm gonna do is actually disable this bottom layer so we can get a good idea of what's going on. Now with scan two selected, 
go ahead and click and drag that in the timeline off to the right side and you'll see how that's creating this edge because they're slightly offset from each other. So depending on how wide you want this edge to be is how far you need to drag over the scan to effect. I'm just gonna drag it over a couple frames like so and so now we should have this really nice edge drawing on. But you're gonna notice that we also have this white edge here and we need to clean that up. So selecting this group, let's go ahead and rename it to be this scanner group. Then we'll go up to our filters, go down to stylize and locate the min max filter. This is going to allow us to erase really small pixels. So go ahead and drag up the radius of that just to one. Now you'll notice that the further I bring this up, the more of our edge disappears. So you can use this to your advantage to clean up the edge if you so desire. Now that we've done that, we can re-enable our original group logo and you'll see how it's being drawn on with that really nice looking edge. Selecting that scanner group, go up to your filters, go down to stylize and select crystallize. Now what we can do is drag up these crystal edges. From there, we could also add under our filters, go to stylize and select pixelate. And the combination of these two filters really makes this effect pop. So now we can drag up the scale on that pixelate filter. You'll see how it's giving it this really cool digital edge. So now it's time to actually colorize this effect. Selecting the scanner group, we'll go on up to filters, we'll go to color and select gradient colorize. Now under our gradient settings, we could just select one of these default gradients if we wanted to. And something that I actually really like is how the rainbow effect looks. Currently, you'll see how just the red part of the gradient is applying. And we definitely want more of the rainbow colors to be introduced depending on how bright different pixels are. So if we go to the bottom of the gradient colorize, we can find the map channel. Currently, it's set to luminance, but if we change it from luminance over to alpha, now you'll see that there are more of the colors being introduced. Now, if I want even more of the colors to be introduced from there, I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag up the repeats. And so you'll see how we have kind of these pixelated colors coming into play. So now that we've done that, it's time to add in the finishing touches of some nice glow effects. Selecting this scanner group, we'll go on up to filters and go down to glow and select neon. Now you can really see how this effect is popping off. We can drag up all of the different brightness values to our liking. I really like dragging up this outer glow quite a bit and then bringing down the outer brightness. So I think that looks really, really nice and it looks like a very digital pixelated edge coming in. Now, if I'm not happy with most of it being this red edge, I could actually drag up the offset and adjust these colors according to whatever I like. So if I want more of a blue edge, dragging up that offset gives it a completely different look. So now that we have our colors applied, it's gonna be important to really integrate this into the scene. So selecting our scanner group, let's go ahead and add a blend mode. Currently the blend mode is normal. I like to use something like screen or add to really make this effect look great. So now that all of this has been applied, we can actually go in and really fine tune this particular effect. And that is the beauty of using those clone layers at the beginning. If we wanted to adjust how this effect looked, all we would need to do is go down to our logo reveal group and find the clouds layer. In the generator settings, we can adjust stuff like the horizontal and vertical scales. So if you wanted a little bit finer of an edge, you could do that. You could also adjust stuff like the first layer strength, second layer strength. And again, you're gonna get different looking effects according to the settings that you change there. If this video was helpful, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you might also really be interested in this video where I show you how to create a portal effect using Apple Motion. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.